What if many of the UAPs and unidentified aerial phenomena that have fascinated and frightened humanity for centuries were not metallic spacecraft from other worlds, but something much stranger, something that could represent a completely different form of life, a fourth domain of life, not based on carbon, but on pure energy? Recently, the prestigious Journal of Modern Physics published a 109-page study the result of a collaboration between scientists from institutions like the University of Arizona and the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, which proposes exactly this, an hypothesis that could rewrite not only the UAP phenomenon, but our very definition of life. Stay with me because we are about to explore a theory that lies on the border between known physics and the unknown. If this type of scientific communication, free from dogma and open to new perspectives, is what you are looking for, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. The study in question analyzes decades of data, including declassified footage from NASA missions, reports from military pilots, and observations from the U.S. Coast Guard. The focus of the analysis is on entities called plasmoids. But what exactly are they? Scientifically, they are described as the fourth state of matter. They are not solids, liquids, or gases. They are composed of positive, negative, and neutral electrical charges organized into cellular layers, and some seem to possess a complex structure with a double membrane and a nucleus, similar to a biological cell. They can take on an incredible variety of shapes, ovoid, elongated, donut-shaped, conical, snake-like, or cylindrical, with dimensions that can reach several tens of meters in diameter. Their abilities, documented by the footage, are astonishing. They can move at hypersonic speeds, make instantaneous 90 or 180 degree turns, can turn on and turn off their luminosity, and are capable of dividing and replicating, forming new plasmoids. Some of these behaviors have been defined by scientists as hunters, entities that actively chase and sometimes pierce other plasmoids, perhaps in a form of energy exchange or, as the study calls it, energy cannibalism. These are not theoretical constructs. They have been observed for decades by the most credible witnesses. Astronaut John Glenn, the first American in orbit, reported in 1962 seeing small, luminous, colored particles that resembled stars and swirled around his Friendship 7 capsule. Years later, the crew of Apollo 11, including Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, reported seeing flashes of light inside their sealed cabin. The same phenomenon was reported by the crews of Apollo missions 12 through 17 who described flashes of blue, red, and white light in the shape of stars or clouds. The commander of the STS-115 shuttle mission described an object as translucent, flexible, not solid, metallic-looking, but not made of metal, that emitted light and shone. Military pilots have similar stories. During World War II, the famous Foo Fighters were described as spheres of light that flew alongside planes. One crew member described them as giant, colorful jellyfish, alive, playing with us. And even Kenneth Arnold, the man who in 1947 unintentionally coined the term flying saucers, actually described objects that change shape, some similar to sky jellyfish with a pulsating thing in the middle concluding that they were living organisms. More recently, in 2019, the crew of the USS Omaha filmed a luminous sphere that flew next to the ship for over an hour before diving and disappearing into the ocean. The scientific basis for their existence is fascinating. Our planet has a global electrical circuit. The ionosphere, hundreds of kilometers above us, has a predominantly positive charge while the Earth's surface is negative. Thunderstorms act as giant batteries, continuously shooting positive charges upwards. This creates an energetically rich environment, a perfect habitat, according to the authors, for these electromagnetic entities. The data indeed show that plasmoids are strongly attracted to electromagnetic activity, 
gathering above thunderstorms, almost as if they were feeding on their energy. They have been filmed descending from orbital altitudes to literally dive into storms. The research doesn't stop there. The authors go so far as to hypothesize that these dusty plasmas present in the high atmosphere, which we know is rich in carbon dust and amino acids from meteorites, could act as incubators for the molecules of life. In a parallel with the famous Miller-Urey experiment, which created amino acids using gas and electrical discharges, plasmoids could, through complex processes of ionic chemistry, catalyze the formation of RNA and DNA-like structures. In essence, they could not only be a form of life, but could even have been the mechanism that gave rise to biological life on Earth and, potentially, on countless other planets. But what are the philosophical implications of this theory? If it were correct, we would be forced to reconsider our concept of reality. We might be sharing our planet, and perhaps the entire universe, with a non-biological intelligent form of life that exists on a purely energetic plane. This leads us to question the nature of consciousness itself. Here, the connection with frontier theories like Sir Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff's quantum consciousness theory becomes almost inevitable. They hypothesize that consciousness is not a product of the brain, but a fundamental process of the universe linked to collapses of the wave function at the quantum level. Perhaps, and here we enter the realm of speculation, plasmoids could represent a form of this cosmic consciousness in a primordial state, not yet bound to the complex architecture of biology. A kind of proto-consciousness that exists as a coherent entity of pure energy from which biological life and our own consciousness would then have evolved. Obviously, this is just a hypothesis that still lacks experimental evidence, so it is right to treat it with caution, but it represents a possibility. In conclusion, what does this revolutionary study leave us with? It leaves us with a powerful idea that the debate on UAPs can and must move out of the realm of pure speculation and into that of scientific investigation. The plasmoid theory, with its strengths and weaknesses, provides a first fascinating scientific model to explain a wide range of anomalous phenomena. It doesn't give us the definitive answer, but it offers us a direction, a tool to question the mystery with the language of physics. Perhaps the sky above us is not traversed by visitors in metallic ships, but is a teeming ocean of a form of life so alien that it has always been right before our eyes, hidden in the glow of a lightning flash, in the brightness of the aurora, a fourth domain of life that is still waiting to be understood. If this journey to the frontiers of knowledge has fascinated you, don't stop here. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next analyses. Thank you for accompanying me on this exploration.